So let me introduce George John from City University of uh, New York. And uh, George, if I ask me to come forward, then we'll begin the day's proceedings. <laughs> and while George is coming forward, we have an apology from Claire Mills, um, who unfortunately isn't able to meet us today. Um, what we'll do is slightly rearrange the program with George, followed by uh, Sophie. Um, on the York Coker House, and then we'll have Meb serve during his talk. And Graham will follow that up before the coffee break this morning with a few words on the Institute of Food Science Innovation to give you a flavour of a bit more about what's going on with the university here in terms of food science. So, a slightly arranged for the programme, but still a very cool programme in terms of what's going on today. So, George, all yours. Good morning. Thank you for coming to in in the morning. Uh, first of all, let me thank Cathy for the invitation and for uh, Professor Barney for the great hospitality. This morning I will talk about what we were practicing for the last few years and mostly on small molecules. I am a chemist. I tried to add a little bit of sugar into my talk and to make it much more food and uh, much more tasty. And I will talk about some of the little bit of organic chemistry, what we do practice, and we are extending that into our material science and food science. We are trying to create the most relevant you know, names for food. We create micelles, vesicles, and liposomes, bilayers, delivery systems, and today I will mostly concentrate on how we can structure vegetable oil using simple molecules rather than trans fat and polymer. And this is a part of City College. We are a part of the big consortium, City University of New York. And uh, we want to create something similar to this one, you know, from vegetable oil. How we can create from very simple molecules with a small amount of that kind of you know, molecules. And why we do, there are two motivations. One is, this is a directive came from FDA last year, in November, uh, November 2013, no more transport allowed in the United States, all over the country, because in the New York and California it has been banned for a long time back, right now all over the country, and whether we can find an alternative source for trans fat. Right now we have a technology, we can create almost any kind of vegetable oil we can, you know, transfer into or convert into a jelly structure or a creamy structure by simple addition of a small molecule, and that is what exactly what I'm Set. And when, why we do this one? What is our interest in our chemistry laboratory? Because when we look at any food, in terms of a material, this food kind of, this is one of the most <coughs> delicacy for French people, for the grass. And if you look at that one, it contains fibers, it contains jellies, it is containing all of, you know, tubular structures. And how we can create, or how we can understand a food material in terms of a, you know, a chemistry as well as a material, and now it contains fibers, hollow cylinders, and jellies, and how we can create in the laboratory. And that's why we are interested in condensed matter, which is mostly on liquids, collides, polymers, foams, and granular materials. We are interested to study on emulsions, foams, polymers, and jellies, and liquids and that happen to be in food science or in uh, paint materials and other kind of jelly materials. And that, this is what we are trying to do in our laboratory. We are trying to utilize plants and crop-based or renewable feedstock-based material as the starting material. We do little organic chemistry in terms of biocatalysis or in other words, the traditional organic synthesis. We create molecules with a hydrophilic part and a hydrophobic tail, you know what this is just an amplifier, or in other words, this is a liquid, or in other words, it's a surfactant. All are same names with a molecule with a hydrophilic part and a hydrophobic tail. And now we are trying to utilize these molecules as a building block for creating soft materials, including fluid structures, solid structures, and liquid crystals, and beautiful architectures. We are trying to understand how we can create beautiful architectures and textures, because texture is matters in the case of food, and uh, how we are going to create this kind of soft materials from simple molecules rather than polymerization. It is not a polymer, it is simple molecules assembled, and it is through the self-assembly process. 
And how we do that self-assembly, whenever you have a lipid molecule, if you are giving water or oil, those molecules assemble. This is the lipid molecule I was talking about, hydrophilic and hydrophobic, and this molecule have a tendency to assemble in suitable environment, creating different kind of assembly like liposomes and uh, vesicle, so liposomes and bilayers and jellies, all kind of stuff. And this is a beautiful picture I got from National Geographic. It is nothing to do with chemistry, but you can see these are all flamingos, individual flamingos. They assemble in a beautiful structure. Why they assemble? Because those birds are from the same class of family. Those birds recognize each other. That's where they come together. Or in other words, if you happen to go to a British museum, if you happen to see one of your friends, or our friend, we automatically go to that friend because we recognize. That is exactly what is happening if it is a different bunch of birds there, they would never assemble like this one. Our interest is how we can create those kind of recognizable elements in small molecules. And what are the recognizable elements? Or in nature, they are the nature all molecules assembled or the proteins, or DNA, or anything, they assemble by utilizing the weak forces of nature, hydrogen bonding, pipe by stacking, water walls and country. These are the three simple weak forces of nature. And we are trying to create those kind of weak forces of nature containing functional groups, and we try to assemble them in water or in oil. This is just for our information sake. What we do is, we are trying to make molecules with a hydrophilic part and a hydrophobic tail. We assemble in water, sometimes we assemble in oil, and we create fluid structures, we create solid structures. Today I am mostly talking about solid structures like fibers and tubes, rather than liposomes and bilayers. As I mentioned, typically we buy chemicals from Aldrich or different companies. And most of our chemicals are coming from nature, we are trying to utilize the the, you know, the kind of the waste materials or the co-products or byproducts of all these industries and uh, vitamins we, we use, we use different kind of vegetable oils, we are using most of these starches and sugars and uh, this is one example I will show you immediately and uh, another kind of molecules. I'm sure that I'm, all of you know the taste of this one, this is cashew nut, what we are eating. I do not know how many people have the clear idea about what it is. This is a real cashew apple and a cashew nut. It has been born in Brazil, then migrated to most of the tropical countries. And if you can see this is a kidney shaped nut. And this is the only, not only, at least there are two, I know. Uh, fruits with the nut is outside. There's another fruit, strawberry. The nut is outside. Most of other cases, the nut is inside. This is for information sake. And when we are processing the separating this edible nut from this nut, there is a liquid is out coming out, and that is called a cashew nutshell liquid. I think I deleted that slide, and that is a waste material. It is nothing related to food. Food is here. The other one is a waste material. I want to show that we create molecules from even that waste material. This is a hydrophobic tail. This is a hydrophilic sugar. And if you introduce this kind of sugars, we can create different kind of textures and assemblies. And we know how to create this kind of textures and fiber structures from simple amphiphilic molecules by the self-assembly process. We are trying to extend that chemistry to create jellies in oil. That is exactly today's talk. You can see we can create all kind of beautiful nanoscale fibers. This nanomaterial is nothing to worry. It is nature's. You know, derivatives and there is a sugar based amphiphilic systems, and there are some of them may be toxic, some of them are totally non toxic. I will talk about those kind of molecules. Anyway, we have the capability to design and assemble and create this kind of beautiful structures from molecules, and this is what exactly we are trying to create in jellies. <coughs> and this is a natural jelly, you know that one, or the starch is a natural jelly, proteins, they make beautiful jellies. And this is one of the best examples for a natural jelly from aloe vera. And why these small guys here? Because I want just to show that the jellies are using food in dessert and also using the different applications like diapers, super absorbents, drug delivery, as well as you know, fertilizer delivery. And when you look at the gel in the microscope, 
what is that? It is nothing but very similar to a sponge. It's a piece of sponge. It is a three-dimensional network. This is a real image of a gel when you look through the ACM, ACM. and uh, there is no solvent. We remove the solvent, then we are looking at what is the real structure of this material. This is a three-dimensional network. We want to create something similar in the laboratory by the assembly of simple molecules in the solvent. And this is exactly, there are two kinds of gels. This is the gel mostly the food scientists are working on. Most of the case, it is polymeric jellies. Polymeric jellies are made from carbon-carbon bond. That means they are covalent bond. They are making three-dimensional network, just like this piece of sponge. And I'm going to talk about this one, how we can create gels from very small molecules, assembling together to create a polymeric structure, but it is not a carbon-carbon polymer. It is by the weak forces of nature, what we call them non-covalent interactions. And because these are created from non-covalent interactions, they are thermoreversible. That means if you heat it, it will just melt. If you cool, it will come back. And these are thermoreversible. And we can create water-based gels, we can create oil-based gels. And both cases, whether it is polymeric gel or it is small molecular gels, we can encapsulate almost 90 to 98% of the solvent in the gel systems. And what we do in our laboratories, we are creating, designing, synthesize, and creating molecules with this kind of hydrophilic part and a hydrophobic tail, lipid molecule. And all lipid molecules never create gel. Few lipid molecules create gels. If you mix with the solvent, in this case it is water or it can be organic solvent. If you assemble, how they assemble? Because these molecules will talk to each other. The head group, the hydrophilic part will interact with the hydrophilic because through the hydrogen bonding or some other interactions. And the tail will interact with the hydrophobic interactions, they make bilayer membranes. And these bilayer membranes are growing in one direction, it is making a beautiful fiber. And those kind of fibers are forming in millions, millions of fibers are forming together, assembling together, they create this kind of three-dimensional network. And that means initially it was a liquid, it is flowing, right now it is not flowing, that's why most of the wires will be quoted in these slides, because we want to show that we create a gel in the laboratory, and we make gels from almost any kind of many of these molecules. But what we do is we are mixing with the solvent, we make a homogeneous dispersion, allow them to assemble together, it's a kind of a slow crystallization process, and you can see there is a beautiful gel. Then we do the typical material characterization, what it is inside, you can see. All these fibers are at the nanoscale, or at the 20 to 30 nanometer diameter, and very long, aspect ratio is high. Whenever you have length, diameter, aspect ratio is high, we call them nanomaterial. And this is not nanoparticle, metallic nanoparticle, these molecules or these structures are created from simple lipid molecules through the assembly, utilizing the weak forces of nature. We are creating three dimensional network. And this is another one. This is actually a natural jelly material from a natural food. It has been practiced for the last 4,000 years. But it is never reported that this is a, a nanoscale material. This has been reported as a micron, you know, 100 microns or 500 micron fiber structure. We found out that this is not 500 microns, it is nanoscale. When you look through a high resolution microscope, you can see it is 50 nanometer. The smallest fiber is 50 nanometer. This is a typically gel structure on the microscope. And what, what are the uses of these jellies? One use is we can use for delivery purposes. Because liposomes are well known for delivery. Liposomes are fluid structures. These, we were talking about, these are all solid structures. You can feel it. You can see it, you can feel it. These are solid structures. Whether we can use those kind of solid bilayer membranes for delivery. And what we use is, we are utilizing the inside hydrophobic regions to encapsulate hydrophobic molecules there, just like the cholesterol which is sitting in our cell membrane. It is sitting here in the hydrophobic regions because cholesterol is highly insoluble. And what we did is, in order to do that, one, we create several molecules. This is few molecules, what we synthesize in the laboratory. All these molecules are coming from nature. This is a byproduct of apricot fruit. 
this is vitamin C, this is a byproduct of cactus, this is trichalos. Many of you know that word, this one, trichalos. V2 enzyme catalysis. There is no chemical harmful chemicals. We are always using enzyme catalysis to create an amplifier because all these basic sugars are water soluble. This soluble sugar is never self assembled. In order to make them self assembled, we create an amplifier. Amplifier, we introduce hydrophobic tails here that can be done by simple enzyme catalysis and we create different kind of jellies in oils. That is exactly what we are going to do. What are the uses of this one? I am sure that you are well aware than me what are the uses of solidifying vegetable oil and uh, how we are doing that <coughs> every day. And uh, currently, the most important solidification of vegetable oil is achieved by trans fat. We are hydrogenating synthetic chemistry or in other words, industry is practicing this one also. They are trying to incorporate plant-based sterols. These are small molecules, but still the carbon content is very high. Whether we can mimic something similar utilizing our chemistry. In that one, we were using this open chain sugars. I'm sure that all of you know this one, especially when you are uh, using chewing gum. Chewing gum contains metal components, xylitol, sorbitol, and mannitol. We are, this is one of the least studied family of sugars, open chain sugars, and cheap, and but it is least explored. In this case also, we are trying to utilize the primary hydroxyl group of these sugars. <coughs> we attach hydrophobic tails there. We are creating something similar to this one. And this is a kind of a Gemini kind of amplifier with a hydrophilic part and a hydrophobic tail. And if you use one of these family of this molecule, we can create oil can be converted into a jelly material. We can solidify them, and this solidification is happening through the fibrous network structures, which formed by the assembly of those amphibolic molecules we generated from these open chain sugars, and it needs less than five percentage. You don't need ten, you don't need thirty percentage, you need only less than five percentage. That is the unwritten rule for small molecular generators. Right now we are mostly talking about only small molecule generators. The molecule weight is less than 1,000. And you can see, and these molecules are multifunctional. They are naturally derived. They are typically antioxidant, very small molecules. And you can, you know, it is thermoreversible. You can heat and cool. It could be possible for in food application or in cosmetic. And this is in a large scale we did. Now, almost all these wilds are inverted because we want to show that these gels are robust enough to hold its own weight. And what is happening is it is mostly by the weak forces, as I mentioned. It is by the water walls interaction. It is by the hydrogen bonding. These molecules making a beautiful stack, a monolayer stack. In one direction, it's making a gel, making a fiber. That means there are several fibers are crisscrossing. It is physically crossing. It is not chemically crosslink, it is physically crosslink, and we create gels, different kind of morphologies. You can see this is fiber structures, this is much more crystalline structures. These are all, we can tune them totally depending on the structure of this basic molecule. The, the structure of the basic molecule means their chirality, their structure, all kind of things. We can tune the final morphology of these fiber structures. That means you can tune the strength of the gel, the oleo gel, what we create. And you can see, these are all different kind of vegetable oils. We can create different kind of uh, uh, oil system, including palm oil, different kind of oils we create. And this is another molecule, trichalose molecule. You know, you are using in most of the cases, especially for baking cake. This is one of the most uh, useful molecules because you know, it, can, it can keep the water hydration. You see, here also, we start with the trichalos. We attach hydrophobic tails on the primary hydroxyl group, only on the primary hydroxyl group. And then we can solidify different kind of solvents. This is not vegetable oil. We can use almost all kind of organic solvents. As I mentioned, it is making beautiful three-dimensional uh, fiber structures. It can create different kind of jellies, uh, very strong jellies, very jelly weak jellies. We can tune them depending on the molecule what we are using, depending on the amount of molecule we are going to use, and we can create. This is the way we are trying to understand what is the minimum amount of material used to create a beautiful gel, and uh, this is what we are doing. 
And actually, recently it has been highlighted in the Journal of Chemical Education because we said this may be the sustainable and greenest way of creating materials for natural resources by enzyme catalysis. We can create beautiful jellies, and this is actually highlighted in the cover page. I think you can see here. When you look through the microscope, this is a low magnification, this is a little bit of high magnification, these beautiful fiber structures, then we are trying to understand how these molecules are arranged. You buy X-ray and IR, all kinds of spectroscopic studies, and these molecules are arranging, stacking them, then it is creating bilayers, then they are creating fibers, and those fibers are turned into cross-linked network structures, and that means it's kind of a primary, secondary, and tertiary structure of this jelly structure. We are trying to understand something more, and that is what we are doing. We are extending this chemistry much more in emulsions and the, all other stuff. You can see, you know this one better than me, I believe, because mine is when you look through the microscope, you are getting beautiful structures. We are trying to understand at the bottom level whether we can characterize. And the same family of molecules, I mentioned the open chain sugar-based molecules, that shows very interesting property if you have a water oil mixer. When you have oil and water mixture, if you have a little bit of a liquid or a soap, if you shake it, it will become emulsion. But in this particular case, these small family of molecules are selectively migrating to the oil, and it is solidified. That means water is intact, nothing is happening, there is no emulsion forming, it is clear enough, and you can see it is actually, it is beaded with the diesel and all kinds of oils, and this is the oil, this is the water, it is water is clean, but you can solidify and oil in presence of water selectively is making beautiful nanoscale fiber structures equal of person of water. And we extend this chemistry to encapsulate pheromones also, or any kind of cell molecule or nutraceutical, because of the, we were working in collaboration with the United States Department of Agriculture. They were looking for a release device for pheromones to increase the production of honeybees. Then only they can increase the production of honey. And uh, we artificially, artificially release this pheromone. This is nothing but an organic molecule, organic liquid. We extracted it and we made a gel. And again, the gel is three-dimensional network. They can encapsulate the pheromones efficiently, and we can release very efficiently, very little waste material, and it's a, it's a very small molecule. It is non-toxic and safe. And when you are talking about jellies, how it is happening? These molecules are kind of start to nucleate. You can see there are so many nucleation sites right now in the initial stage, but after some time they grow into three-dimensional network. That is exactly a jelly. And uh, I think I have <coughs> oh, fine. Yeah. Okay. And the, actually the gel structure are almost done because yesterday there was a talk by Professor Fatim Chaudhary regarding the coating materials. We are also working on this nothing related to jelly but it is a work we have done with vegetable oil. We use vegetable oil, again, for making antibacterial coatings. You can see, I'm sure that you know this chemistry, if you have vegetable oil or cooking oil, if you open it for a couple of days, it will become rancid or smelly. Why it is happening? It is a simple chemistry. This allylic CH2 group, it can easily abstract oxygen from atmosphere and it is making peroxides. The peroxides are unstable, and they, they kind of decompose, they make free radicals. Actually, it's a complicated chemistry, but it is known to be through the free radical process. These free radicals, it is a nature's chemistry, we don't do anything, it is anyway it is happening whenever there is vegetable oil is there, because it's abstracting oxygen. And these free radicals are known to reduce noble metals into metallic, uh, you know, metal zero. If you start with the gold AU3 plus metal ions into AU0, if you start with the AG1, it will turn into AG0. If you get platinum, you can convert into platinum zero. That is, it is known in the literature. We are trying to utilize that nature's chemistry to do something in the laboratory. And that is one good part of this nature's chemistry, the oxidation, this one. We can create beautiful oil paintings. We can create this kind of Japanese lacquerwares or Chinese lacquerwares. And the other one is when we are getting wrinkles, that is the bad part of oxidation. But anyway, 
we try to utilize these vegetable oils for creating particles. These are the nanoparticles, metallic nanoparticles. Our interest was to demonstrate this chemistry is useful for something to create in the laboratory, but we found out it is much more interesting. We create nanoparticles in the vegetable oil, utilizing this chemistry of oxidation. We create paint. So this is a paint from vegetable oil containing gold nanoparticles. This is a paint we created in the laboratory which contains silver nanoparticles, about 20 nanometer size. And uh, this silver containing vegetable oil paint is a beautiful paint. If you put it today in one hour time, it will be completely cured and you can touch it. And uh, this uh, silver containing paint is really antibacterial. It is killing any kind of negative, gram negative and gram positive bacteria. We published in nature materials few years back. This is a part, maybe it is potentially useful for antibacterial paintings. And uh, it's coming from vegetable oil again because we start with archive paints and we extensively studied it. Even though I showed a few slides, we extensively studied this one. We know the chemistry. We are, we are capable to create this kind of technology, to transfer this technology. And we are extending the chemistry into fibrous jellies, worm like my cells. And uh, all kinds, there are different kinds of gel structures are there we are trying to understand. And this is a recent study we did. This is, a, again, related to something related to food because we were deriving some new molecules from, again, the cashew, natural liquid, waste material, one of the waste material. We made a molecule, we do some little organic chemistry. We found out those molecules are specifically can control the diet. We are trying those in, in animals right now but it can control the, 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 the activity of the fatty acid amidase hydrolase. And that enzymes are controlling the diet or the kind of appetite, actually not the diet, the appetite. And this is the first example in the literature that the family of molecules can enhance the activity of this enzyme. Because all molecules are retarding or inhibiting the activity of the enzyme. But this time, it is uh, enhancing. We, we are working on this one. Finally, the story is we can create molecules and materials from renewable fuel stock in a sustainable way, green way, and it could be potentially useful in food and in uh, cosmetic, all kinds of materials. And most of our capabilities are the around in the jellies. This is kind of sustainable molecular design, biomass as a platform we can utilize for food applications. And these are some of the examples we created. We can encapsulate pheromones, we can encapsulate nutraceutical, we can encapsulate curcumin or any kind of hydrophobic molecules in the hydrophobic bilayers of the membranes. And these are kind of actives we encapsulated in our single sugar-based molecules. And then we have these technologies available. If anybody is interested, I'm happy to talk about. And uh, this is our new building, science building at City College of New York, brand new, it is opening next week. And uh, this is just for, uh, you know, the, we made a candlelight from vegetable oil gel. This is just a simple vegetable oil, and we solidified with our molecule. And thank you for your attention, and happy to answer your questions. Thank you. processing involved in when you change the raw oil to the gel. You just add in and mix or add Yes, there is little processing is there, but it is not that hard. Typically, these simple molecules are liquids, and they are not happy with oil, they are not happy with water. In order to dissolve or disperse in any solvent, we need to apply some form of force. Either it is heat or sonication, or grinding, whatever it is possible, but we need some form of energy because they are not easily going into the money. Please. Can you create the solid vegetables at the scale where you can actually try and Yeah, that is exactly what we are looking for. If anybody is interested, we can create. Oh, maybe I have to say one thing. These small molecular jellies, I think there are the last 10 years that active research is going on. And several groups are working on this one all over the world. 
the difference between them and ours is because typically these uh, small molecules, typical gelling molecules can create by multi-step organic synthesis and it is going to be tedious and expensive. Our process is we start with the sugars and fatty acid. We are using the same catalysis, single step, and the yield is about 90 to 95 percent that we can create in kilograms. That means it is processable, we can scale it. And have you tried the application? We uh, start talking about few people, but we haven't done it. Yeah, after yeah, the duration, have you ever sent consider a topic, you know, normally in this country you must change the structure or like the composition of the stuff for the safety side. The and toxicity? Yeah. yeah. The toxicity, I believe, because you know, even we were doing similar molecules for drug delivery applications, we are working in collaboration with the Harvard Medical School, we are testing in animals. And many of the molecules, we start with the simple organic molecules. We test the toxicity of those molecules. And those molecules are non-toxic. Basically, the vegetable oil is non-toxic. And then we are adding this molecule. That's what we do. There is no chemical changes happening for that molecule. That means the basic molecule is non-toxic. We believe the final material, the structure also should be non-toxic. But for your question, maybe I had never tested the toxicity of the gel assets. In our but I don't believe it is toxic because we are not doing any chemical changes, only physical mixing. But you are doing some catalyst, catalyst side, those gel. No, initially we start with the sugar mm -hmm. and a fatty acid. We conjugate them. That is the enzyme catalysis. We create a molecule, and that molecule is non toxic. That is a lipid, sugar lipid molecule. That is non toxic. Then we are using that molecule just to mix with the oil in a process. And in that one, it is a physical mixture. Yeah, that, that's, that's my concern because when we talk about like uh, alcohol, methanol and, uh, and ethanol, it's just one carbon shot. But methanol is very toxic, ethanol also not toxic. So this comes in when we, when we change, like uh, we do them a simple catalysis, you link them together. You know that themselves. Once we linked, we test the toxicity of the molecule we receive or we prepare in the laboratory after linking, they are not toxic. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, other question? I have a question for you. The bigger part of the first book. This discuss the stability of what happens if you change the pH in the environment or you said it's thermal reversible yeah. over what temperature range? I dis it is, yeah, that's a very good question. It is typically depending on the the solvent. Solvent means oil or organic solvent or water. And most of the case, just imagine, maybe in the ranges of 80 to 120, 150, depending on the solvent we use. If you use vegetable oil, usually the melting point is in the range of hundreds. Or anyway, it is above 60s. Always we are getting above 60s. But that is one kind of concern because of polymeric gels, they can make much more robust mechanically robust and thermally robust. But that is the advantage of here, we can reversible it, but the usual temperature is above 50, 60 degrees centigrade. pH? pH, these molecules, they are not, uh, not uh, you know, responsive towards pH because these are neutral molecules. If you start with amino acid based gels, they are pH sensitive, but our molecules are not pH sensitive. We tested with even with the salts, different kind of salts and nutraceutical. It is still stable and it is robust. One last question, Kazim. Uh, I was intrigued you mentioned the uh, amide hydrolysis. The last one. The what? last one. And yeah. I was wondering what sort of amide bonds you have. That one is the talk, you know, I just showed one slide. It is nothing related to what I mentioned about the daily structures. It is another family of molecules uh, we synthesize from that newborn feedstock and those molecules, it is ethanolamine based molecules, it's a kind of uh, N-acyl ethanolamines and those family of molecules are typically either retarding the FAH fatty acid amide hydrolase enzyme, their activity. 
that will control the appetite of any any animals. And those family is nothing related to what we are talking about, the jelly structures. <coughs> but it's a different family of molecules. I wanted just to show that we have the capability to synthesize new molecules that can have some some application in food or diet kind of. Well, I was simply intrigued that there is no amide bond, and yet you're talking about amide. Uh, my other question is effectively you are actually extending the polymer land and because of that they are polymerizing and you are seeing We are not polymerizing anything. We are taking small molecules. We are stacking, you know, just imagine we have donuts. If you stack thousands of donuts, you know, you cannot stack thousand donuts because they don't have any kind of attraction. Yeah. But if you can make molecules and if you can attract them by the weak forces like hydrogen bonding, we can make a Polymeric structure, it is not a polymer. Yes, in a, in a normal oil, that will not happen. So you are changing the structure slightly. But my question is how different this process is from uh, natural lenses? We you can have very extraction, which will melt at 40 or 60 and 80. I think they are much more complex molecules. Because we even we do not know the exact structure, it is highly hydrocarbon. And uh, it may be something similar, I am sure. That but it is, it is much more clear structure. The carbon content is eight or less than 10. Beeswax is definitely it is 16 or more than that, because then only it can make the wax. Minimum we need 16 carbon. Here we are talking about less than 12. Yeah. But we are not, just I want to let you again know, we are not making any polymer. It is polymer-like structure by the weak force. I, I think this question raised by calling here is, yeah. is Actually, you, you are chemically modifying oil. Yes. No, no, no. We are not chemically modifying oil. Yeah, that is the first step. Well, there is the first step, or at least the second step. That is happening. Yes. And the process. Yes. But, and that, that is the thing which basically leads to further gelling or whatever. Yes. Maybe hours. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll discuss it. Yes.